Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you ever so much for joining another event of, of Academia's. Welcome to another webinar of, as part of our Spotlight Stories campaign. So um, this is where we get under the bonnet of some of the, the, the most innovative um, education establishments in the UK. We talk to real world practitioners about what they're doing with technology um, in their setting and how it's adding value to students. So um, I'll introduce myself very quickly. So I'm Luke Holcroft Young, um, one of the directors of Academia Group, um, and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by the team from the University of Leicester's Medical School. So I'll, I'll pass over to you guys to, to introduce yourselves. Therese, over to you first, please. So I'm Therese Bird, and um, I'm the educational designer for Leicester Medical School. Hi, my name is Mark Hamilton. I'm a lecturer with an interest in kind of technology and education at Leicester Medical School. Thanks ever so much. So, so Therese, talk, talk to me a little bit more about your role. Um, educational designer, what does, what does that entail for, for some of the, the guys on the webinar that, that might not be aware of, of, of what an educational designer does? Doesn't it sound posh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, basically, when I describe what I do, I try to say um, I help the students to learn and I help the, the teachers to teach. Um, with an angle on psycho uh, sorry with an angle on technology often not exclusively but often um, and um, and since we've gone one iPad per student back in 2013 that's been kind of the way that I um, you know channel quite a bit of our um, how to learn and how to teach Perfect. So, but back in 2013, quite mature then. So we'll, we'll explore some of the journey with one-to-one -one iPad in, in just a moment. But, but Mark, same question um, to yourself, please. Tell us, tell us a little bit about your role within um, Leicester Medical School. Um, I am a Associate Professor of Medical Education and I head up one of the year groups, the second year, which is a really fun year. It's a preclinical year. And this is where we have kind of focused most of our attention on kind of using technology um, in, in kind of educating our students or embedding it in the way that we do things to enable students and enable staff to have a bit more interaction, to be able to do different um, things. So, yeah, it's, it's been, a, been a really exciting journey and um, it's, it's continuing, actually. It's continuing to grow. And what we're seeing now, quite a few years later, is is kind of the maturing of of the kind of how we use it and extending into the clinical years a little bit more. So yeah, it's been an exciting time. Perfect. Okay. So um, Therese, just to just to build on what you were saying. So you mentioned that you guys have been running um, a one one iPad per student since 2013, or one to one as we as we sort of refer to that internally. Um, so when when you decided to make that leap, I mean, obviously that's a significant investment in terms of you know time and resource and having to rethink about um, the way you design and deliver um, the, the the curriculum within the medical school. Um, when you made that leap and decided that was the route you were going to go down, what what were the initial challenges and problems that you, you set out to solve? Okay, the initial challenges and problems we were trying to solve. Um, I think a lot of our uh, angle on this was um, not just, you could say originally to have all the learning resources at your fingertips. You could say it that way. You know, the eBooks from our library, um, lecture slides and everything that were given on our virtual learning environment, all of that all together in a single place, um, as well as student notes on their course all together in a single place. That's easy to carry and, um, you know, no problem with battery life. Um, in, in a sense, that was kind of where it started. We also wanted to um, see if we could explore more um, interactivity, you know, multimedia and interactivity with the students. Um, so, you know, this was, this was where we started experimenting with, um, you know, these interactive quizzes, um, 
uh, live polling and the lectures, things like this, which, um, which yes, you, you could assume that students could have these things on their phones, but, um, you know, the iPad is more like, a, it's, it's a tablet that you can sketch on. It's more like a, more like a notebook. It's more like a, um, a clipboard and it's more like a library book. It's, it's those things rather than a phone, you know? Um, and so it just seemed to be, you know, in terms of technology and in terms of future possibilities, that seemed to be the thing that, you know, the right thing for us to buy. I will say I wasn't with the university. I wasn't with uh, the medical school when that decision was made. Um, so that was Mark. <laughs> but, but we were conspiring <laughs> across departmental lines at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So, Mark, um, over to you. If you're if you're to blame for all of this, for this, these iPads in the in the medical school, what was the um, what was just just bring us in, into some of that thinking and sort of building on what what Therese was saying around sort of why iPad to to solve some of these challenges. Um, it, yeah. So initially, we to give you some kind of idea of how we used to run things. So in the first couple of years, um, the students would go through like four terms or semesters, as we call it. And in each semester, you would get a, I'm not sure you can see my hands, like a pile of workbooks. L literally, you know, four, twice a year, you'd, you'd get this many workbooks. And it was, it was just hideous seeing them all piled up. Um, you know, even at that point, it, it seemed just wrong. You know, we were, we were kind of... Um, a university a well-known university and we were kind of just printing out and it was also a nightmare just as a as a kind of academic to to send stuff off to print and then like oh i've i've spelt gastrointestinal wrong that's going to be embarrassing or or whatever it happened to be you know it just seemed it seemed wrong that we were doing this um and so i i had an ipad as a just a personal thing from when they well I had a second generation iPad. I didn't get the first one, which I regret now because they were so wonderful. I know Therese had one, mm -hmm. uh, which I envied. Um, <laughs> but it just seemed like the logical thing. It had good battery life. It wasn't so, super expensive. It was portable. And, uh, you know, the, the option w was to go for um, a laptop. If, could we give the students laptops? And just with at that, especially at that point, um, the battery life was so hideous. So it was an obvious device, um, although still quite young in its kind of development. I mean, compared to now, um, you know, it, it's it seems quite not primitive, but certainly less functional or less um, kind of less useful. But um, even at the time, it was perfect for what we wanted to do. So that was the reason. Yeah, certainly to 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 go. You know, one to one back in 2013, you guys would have been, you know, certainly a, an, an early adopter from a from a higher education standpoint. iPad, um, you know, since since it launched a couple of years um, prior to 2013, it was, was starting to get into one to one in schools. But but certainly in in HE, you guys would have been a would have been an early adopter. Um, and and I, I suppose that it's worth pulling out that you know since then we've seen. From from back then in 2013 to where we are now in 2021, we've we've seen such innovation and um, to what you can do with with iPad as a as a tool for for learning and 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 I know in in sort of the build up to this, um, Teresa, when we asked you to share some of your thoughts about some of the some of the challenges and things, um, personalized feedback was was something that you 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 pulled out and and i think um you know we we've seen that you know ipad as a tool for assessment and feedback and how that's really developed over the years and um, become become so powerful for, for for educators so did you did you want to just sort of build on that a little bit more for us okay so um yeah i mean we have quite a number of students in each one of our years each, each one of our year groups so we admit just over 300 students every year. So, um, you know, you've got all these students, all these students in the lecture, all these students that you've got to, that, you know, you're duty bound to make sure that they're understanding the concepts. So um, one of the first things that, um, that Mark and I worked on to, um, to, you know, enable the feedback was um, we 
bought a um, uh, an examination package. It's called ExamSoft, and it was a way of um, creating these little quizzes. And we would do, you know, maybe ten question quizzes once a week, um, and um, in the students' uh, small group weekly sessions, they would open up their iPads, they would go to the quiz, and um, this, these quizzes were sometimes they were just like you know, um, you know, you know, what is scoliosis? Like, were you actually listening in the lecture? It, like, it was, you know, they could be quite simple, but they could be, um, you know, where you needed to have some. Um, you know, quite analytical thinking in order to, you know, choose the right uh, answer in the multiple choice, you know, simple format. But um, by going through these, the students could um, kind of consolidate their learning and it would give them a focus rather than just looking at um, lecture notes and kind of going over them again and again in their heads, which would have been like an A-level way of studying. These um, e exams, these little quizzes, we realized that they were um, you know, it, it was helping them to think through and uh, kind of test their knowledge, make connections with the other uh, subjects that they were studying, and also give them a, a bit of a um, an idea of where they stand. You know, how many did you get right? So as soon as they finished the uh, the quiz, then a, a review would come up and it would go through the quiz again, show them what they answered, and then show them what the correct answer was, and a little bit of... Um, um, you know, some text there explaining why the correct answer is correct and why the other distractor answers were wrong. And, um, you know, maybe with a little a little image or a little, you know, something like that. And so the students, they, this was like revolutionary to them. They would pull out their phones and take pictures of these things on their, <laughs> because they were, um, they were like, wow, they, they just felt like the learning was so good for them. And um, because we know they didn't have, they hadn't had anything like this before. And um, so that was sort of the beginning of the, now that doesn't, perhaps that might not sound terribly personalized, but it was because it was their answers and it was, you know, it was the material uh, that they needed for that question. And so that was sort of the beginning of this idea of, you know, the personalized answers um, for them. And we're still using that. That just, you know, the students liked that so much that they would come to the staff student committee and say, hey, um, Dr. Hamilton is using that, you know, this technique in his gastrointestinal lectures. Can everybody use that? And Actually, it was it was it was not very long before everybody was using it because we could just see the value of that. Yeah. So that was yeah, that's some of our feedback experience. Wow, yeah, that's <laughs> there's so much to drill into just there. And then you know, even in even in the description of that feedback, personal, you know, with that that is is obviously the the expectation of, of higher education students coming into to universities now they they want to feel like their their learning is personalized and tailored and 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 is in is enriched so um no very very interesting so 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 mark um a, a similar sort of question to to to, to you really around the uh, around that 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 feedback piece being able to deliver that personalized feedback to the students what what benefit did that start to to deliver um to to the medical school well, I suppose like all HE kind of institutions and medical schools, especially, we're still kind of plugging away at that um, at that topic. Getting getting feedback is something getting personalized feedback that's timely and useful, all that kind of stuff is is incredibly hard. Therese has described um, ExamSoft was just there are there are other platforms <laughs> But we happen to use ExamSoft from a long time ago. And, and as Therese described, you could get these kind of um, PDFs of your performance with traffic lights, with green. Well, because it's multi-choice, it was either green or red, but just really easy highlighting that. But I suppose also um, in terms of the kind of personalized stuff, interactive quizzes during lectures, Although there were many um, kind of ways of doing it, the iPads really helped us because we knew that all the students would have it. And we use another system called Top Hat, which is a response system. And again, that they could be in a lecture and they could be getting a score for a, a quiz which you could prepare or you could just do on the fly. So, so having all that there made everything a little bit more personal to the students. 
it wasn't so much of just one way traffic with us kind of yawning on and the students just kind of putting up with it, which we still do. And I certainly do a lot of. But, um, yeah, just just having this kind of democratization of platform. So we knew that or the the kind of academic staff knew that we could do something because everyone had a recipient device or, or a device they could interact with us with made just everything a bit more personal and and Therese is right once once the ball sort of got rolling it became um, a matter if you were a, a lecturer who didn't include these elements in your in your kind of unit then you were singled out as you know in, in the feedback and um, we take our feedback very seriously and it's it's not competitive but you know it's <laughs> sort of you want to you want to be doing the best you can and so all these little elements that added that kind of uniqueness to a student or rather how they could gauge their own progress I think that's really something that students need they need to know where they are in their learning and when they don't know where they are even if they're in a good place it's very anxiety inducing so so I think at, at a at a you know fairly fundamental level, having this technology in place really helped. And I think you touched on such an important element of that is is that two way. So you can gauge you know the the, the, the students are learning um, at, at the pace they need to be, and what you guys are, are delivering is 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 consistent and going in. You know, if, if before that, who, who who would have known? So um, no, really, really. Um, really rich content and in terms of um you know one thing that we we always in these sort of spotlight stories in these in this series of case studies we've been doing one of the things we always talk about is happy accidents um so you guys would have set out on this journey to um to put you know ipad in the hands of students to you know in summary of our sort of conversation so far to condense that that toolkit that the student's going to need so instead of printing reams of paper and all of the expense and complexity that goes with that condensing that down and giving them a, a tool that's really going to enrich that feedback and, and your delivery and the quality of that um what other happy accidents have you guys seen as a medical school? What what, what else has happened as a result of, of rolling out one-to-one -one iPad? Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm just you, trying to think. <laughs> you, um, you, you mentioned in 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 the um in in our some of our earlier conversations about the iPad giving you more rich media. So um, we haven't really explored that too much. So, um, you know, talking about handwriting, talking about, um, you know, the fact that you've you've got the ability to capture video and, and, and audio in, in great HD. Yeah. Well, I think um, even just in a simpler um, uh, aspect here, um, we OK, so I meet the, the students as they arrive in Leicester Medical School and I, you know, I say, Welcome, here's our digital platform that we're gonna be learning from. Um, and the one thing I tell them to buy is the app called Notability. And Notability is, um, it's you might just think it's a simple, humble PDF annotator, but um, it's actually pretty revolutionary in terms of um, students um, taking notes and consolidating what they're learning. Um, so, you know, it's a PDF annotator. So in general, um, higher education, it tends to be built around the lecture. So the um, lecture, uh, lecturing staff will um, take, uh, have, have their PowerPoint slides. They will save them as PDFs, give them out on the uh, virtual learning environment. And we tell the students, take those and bring them onto your iPad and, uh, you know, Im import them to Notability. Then during the lecture, they're taking their Apple Pencil or whatever they, even if they're just typing, they're adding onto the notes. And you know, you can you can zoom in and go out. And the students are creating uh, like diagrams, um, mind maps from one concept to another as they're listening uh, to the lecture. And then with Notability, you can um, you can take your voice, you can record. Uh, you know, this means that I have to link this with what I learned in uh, cardiovascular yesterday, or you know, something like that, where the student is talking in their own words, and that's all being saved there. 
and we tell the students, whatever you're learning in, um, in uh, Notability, keep it um, organized, perhaps by, by topics, and then back it up into a cloud so that it's not only on your iPad, it's also in the cloud so you, you don't lose it. And then you've got that as your, you know, your, um, uh, your ongoing notes of, of your course in medicine. Um, so, so to me, that's quite, you know, and then at the same time, the student, you know, on the iPad, you can um, uh, kind of multi, um, you know, you can be working on your notes ability and on the, on the other side, you can go into YouTube and you can say, okay, I need a demonstration of, of how, um, how the food is going down the gastrointestinal tract, you know, and then they'll kind of link that in, uh, you know, you can link that into your notes. And then basically you've got this whole quite rich, um, you know, a uh, set of, uh, it's a snapshot of their learning that they were doing in the lecture, um, which they also do with their friends in a, in a group work setting. So, um, so much richer than just scribbling into papers in a, in a file, you know, so you can just uh, see how this all works together. Yep, absolutely. And you, you touched on, I think, one of the, the best kept secrets on iPad, which is split screen, the mm. ability to have two apps alongside one another whenever we demonstrate that um, people always go wow didn't know you didn't know you could do that <laughs> how how useful is that and and going back to what you were saying about you know some of this functionality around polls and and getting that feedback you you know you could have done on a on a phone the, the, this is when you start bringing in these concepts that actually that bigger screen real estate that that bigger footprint and enables you to start you know having split screen and bringing content cross application and, and making notes um is, is is fantastic um so mark same same question to you really H happy accidents that you've observed in the medical school as a result of and i suppose they have to be happy i don't, don't want to hear any any other accidents from the medical school um yeah so actually so actually so many um i would say um like what Therese has been saying about notability is, is actually a joy to watch students. It becomes almost like a, a new skill they have as they kind of, the way they use it, some are happy typing, some are kind of annotating, but it's, it, it's really become like, a, like an, a next level skill they have to, to get everything in one place. So, so that's, that's really great. But of course, um, the iPad increasingly so is an incredibly powerful tool for um, AR, so we've got um, our head of anatomy has been making lots of 3D models of uh, various uh, organs, which sounds gross, but we're a medical school, we have to be dealing in that. So even in, a, in an exam recently, we actually used uh, the iPads so that we could get them to rotate a, a 3D heart around and they had to point out various different bits and actually a dissected pelvis, again, uh, completely in 3D uh, that we we did in house, but was, you know, on the iPad, no problem at all. Uh, so so the ability to do that is like bonkers. You know, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Who would have thought a few years ago, uh, back when money was flowing a bit more, um, Trees and I commissioned uh, a local um, company to build us a an AR skull, which was really cool. We used Oculus Rift and we did all funny things, but that was very expensive. Well, it was worth the money at the time, but, you know, we couldn't do that more. But nowadays it's so much easier to, to do these things. Um, I would say if you go around group work and our group work, I would say, is uh, really the key to our learning in, in the first couple of years. So there's groups of eight um, around a table. Each of them have got a big monitor with an Apple TV there. And what, what they do is uh, one of them will be the kind of facilitator and they'll, they'll have their uh, workbook up on the screen and everyone can contribute and everyone can see because it's up on the big screen, but it's being kind of done there with the iPad. Um, another thing, one of my favorite things about, and I'm not, you know, trying to advertise Apple here, but um, kind of, uh, the ability to share things, so airdrop things, is absolutely wonderful. So you'll you'll get students just doing that all the time. They're like, oh, oh what's your, I can't I can't be bothered. Get, just you know, ping it over, or what do you think, and and do it over. So uh, just seeing how intuitive 
these bits of technology are to youngsters and they use them in a thousand ways we probably don't even know about. Mm. Um, and yeah, they use them for all their social stuff as well, which we encourage. We, you know, it's their device. We're not trying to say this is just a work thing. So I think they, it just becomes, yeah, like embedded in how they do everything. Mm. And uh, it, we, like I, I said, sort of, we can't imagine rolling back. If somebody said, oh, look, we're trying to save a bit of money, we would take it off other things and not, mm. And not the, the, this this kind of tool that we've mm. we've got because it has been so transformative to the way we're able to do stuff. Mm. And that, I don't think that's exaggerating. No, I don't think so. It. I don't think so. No, yeah. Transformation, such a you know that is a yeah. that is a key word in all of this. And um, I'd, I'd just like to pull out some of those um, some of those points you made there, Mark, because some of it was 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 so great. And, you know, I, I often think about, you know, my own personal experience. And when I transitioned from um, from sort of school and, and, and sort of post 16 into higher ed, you know, one of the biggest changes there was collaboration, this idea that, you know, for the first couple of years, a lot, lot of your uh, a lot of your work, a lot of the assessment was was group work. And, you know, that is the, the bridge that gets you ready for that real world is that, you know, we're going to we're going to now start working on things collaboratively we're gonna we're gonna start some critical thinking as a group we're gonna start you know working in working in a peer group to get the job done and i think when you have a tool like ipad to support some of that that's when you start to see some of the real transformation um taking place and and going back to um airdrop and things like that you know beyond airdrop you know handoff and and some of the things that you can do if you've got other apple devices starting to connect and um yeah it's it's, it's, it's all so fantastic for streamlining and um, all of that um so i guess what i'd really like to start exploring is is how this has started to really deliver that that impact to the medical school so we've touched on um so far sort of the the, the reasons why you did it we've touched on some of the happy accidents but what does it all mean for the for the students how do you guys feel that this has changed and importantly improved the way that students learn within the medical school well i think it helps the students to um integrate um, the, the topics as they are learning them. That's such an important, um, I, I'll, I'll call it a skill, that um, early year medical students just have to learn. You know, of course, so we, st they, we study in units, you've got gastrointestinal, and you've got cardiovascular, you know, you've got the different things. But, you know, when you see a patient, it's a person with all these things. And so begin, you know, as as the students mature, they really have to be bringing these concepts together. And in a sense, just having the, an iPad just really helps with that because um, as you are learning, as you are in any any learning uh, event that you're in, no matter what kind of class it is that you're, we tell the students have this with you at all times. Um, they can be, um, you know, a, a, a adding a note to this place and then kind of linking it to this place and bringing these things all together so that it's um, synthesizing in their mind. Um, and that's what we want to see in, in good medical students. So I would say that, um, you know, the iPad has really helped us to do that. Um, I mean, I can also say that our this year, our students did quite well on their exams. I don't know if we could say uh, <laughs> it's because of their iPads, or it's because of the technology, but they they did. It's possible that with COVID, they had to just settle down and study. <laughs> they couldn't go out as much, um, you know, but bottom line is they did quite well. I can share that. <laughs> and, and, and Mark, same same question to you, please, around that, around that student, um, how, how it's improved student learning. Where What's the impact been? Um, yeah, well, I, I, from my perspective, I, I agree with um, Therese. Um, but I, I also think um, the collaboration thing is, you kind of mentioned it as you, the movement when you went into higher education or when you left um, school. The idea of working together is possibly the most efficient, effective way of, of, of kind of learning things properly. So I, I am part of a, and Therese, we're both part of an academic support unit and we meet up with students 
And we just kind of, um, they're not all struggling students at all, but we just kind of analyze how they're going about things. It could be a very successful student, but who's got no time to do anything else. So we just kind of look at what they do. And one of the first things I always say is, do you work with any other students, you know, regularly? Do you kind of discuss things? Do you have conversations about this? And um, I would say having a device like an iPad with all your stuff on it is absolutely critical to that, the ability to say, come on, you know, on a sunny day, let's go to the park. We can we can kind of sit down here or, you know, go to go to a coffee shop or come around to my dorm room or whatever it is. And they've got everything they need right on there. And a lot of them do um, electronic flashcards. There's a number of apps that you can do that. And they're very they're very kind of good for starting conversations. So you can just take it in turns. I've got this, you know, and just ask questions to the kind of your group, two or three of you. Um, but just having everything there so you can bring up a lecture from, you know, five weeks ago. You would never have done that if you had to lug things around or if it was in any other format. Uh, it's just it is a it is a it's a conversation starter in terms of your learning. And it means there's really no excuses for getting together with other people. And we're seeing increasingly students uh, organ self-organize themselves into into smaller groups that may or may not be their regular group and and the hub of it is a device like an ipad well in our case an ipad where they, they that's kind of what drives the conversation and, and drives the learning so that for me is is probably i would say one of the biggest contributions the fact is the whole the whole way they're inputting information onto it and learning from it um, but the ability to have it then all there and to be able to begin a chat about x y or z is key definitely i could, Sorry, I could share something really quickly um so um there's this concept of digital literacy or digital capability now the Health Education England in 2018 came out with a framework saying that we would like every um, employee of the NHS to be um, digitally literate, digitally capable, and that includes um, uh, communicating digitally, learning digitally, being proficient in using different kinds of digital tools. Um, and um, as time goes on, I'm beginning to incorporate that framework into the, the way that I talk to students about how, you know, why we're using iPads, why we want them to work digitally, because um, they have to do that when they get into the workplace. Um, Health Education England says so. So, um, and, um, and I also can share that, um, um, now, I'd have to check out exactly what this is, but there's some kind of a survey that as our students finish, um, they are asked, um, how well prepared do you feel for going into the field? And our students are scoring quite high in the in the United Kingdom for that. And I and I want to believe that it's something about it is, you know, we've strived to help them to, um, you know, be ready in all ways, including digitally. You know, who knows what they're going to find when they get onto the wards? Maybe they f they'll find, um, you know, a Windows 7 computer that they have to deal with. But we've kind of want them to just look, just, you know, using the iPad is just one way of kind of mucking in and trying and experimenting. And it might be messy, but just try it and get used to it. And so then when they graduate and they get onto the ward, they're just kind of used to trying things, you know, in digitally as well as other ways. And, and, and that is such a key part of, of, of the value that higher education adds is that is that getting you ready, not not just with the um, just not just with the, the, the knowledge that you attain through learning, but the experience getting ready for that real working world. Yeah. Um, and look, you know, I know we, we've touched on it in previous conversations. Um, as a group, we work with NHS trusts. We work with um, NHSX on some of the things that are going on within the NHS from a from a digital transformation perspective. And one thing is for sure: the the growth of mobile, the growth of um, of, of tablets um, out there on on wards is is only going in one direction. So the fact that you guys are giving them that grounding, uh, you know, the the value is is just there to to see. So. Um, 
let, let's link it, if we may, to student experience, because, you know, we've spoken about why you guys decided to do it. We've, we've spoken about the impact it's had to student learning and some of the happy accidents. Um, but, but what's the feedback been like from students? You touched on it just just um, just now, Therese, in terms of the, the guys are scoring you well for, you know, giving you that pat on the back to say, well done, um, Lester, you're preparing me for going into the real world. But, but what else have you guys seen from a student experience standpoint? Well, I could, I guess I could share our uh, national student survey. I don't know if Mark, if you even know about this, but um, in 2020, the question was, now I'm not gonna be able to quote it exactly, but it was something like, um, were your uh, information technology, uh, was your information technology support um, helpful for your learning? And in 2020, the answer to that question was 92% agree or, or, or strongly agree. And um, that was the fourth highest in England. So of, of all the other institutions. So I mean, that was with that, that was a clear rise from when we first started in 2013. Um, so to me, you know, just having our students say that on that survey is sort of a validation right there. <laughs> because that, you know, we're kind of judged by that survey, so <laughs> so uh, so for that for that to be said, just they you know they must have meant it. They must feel that um, you, you know it, the iPad is their um, information technology experience. It's not the the computer labs that are put there in the university. It's it's our iPads, you know. Uh, absolutely, and I think um, you know talking about labs, and um, I know, I know we we'd mentioned previously about examinations and struggling for for lab space. How how you know how stressful must that be? Not just for exams and 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 getting the students ready to go and sit exams, but for other things. You know, if students are, are having to to run around campus trying to find a, a, a room that's free to go and do some work to to get ready for a submission. Um, I, I, you know, I imagine that has a great impact on student experience. If you remove that problem by back to Mark's point, you know, work anywhere, take take your device, take everything you need to the park. Um, you know, that's that's better than than running around a campus trying to find a, a, a spare lab in a room. So there's there's, there's obvious benefits there to, to student experience. Um, and 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 just just from your perspective, Mark, just just to build on that a little bit more in terms of um, some of the things that Therese was saying, what 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 are the students telling uh, telling you? I think there's there's a lot of kind of direct. Um, one of the things is when we first started this program, um, the iPads. You know, even when people were coming to university open days, I mean, it was one of the things they mentioned. You know. Why would you like to come to Leicester? Well, we get an iPad and, you know, it was a real positive thing. Um, and but as time goes on, they don't directly mention the iPad anymore in, in feedback. Um, but they mention all the things it facilitates, which is exactly how we would want it. Um, it's it's not disappeared completely in their consciousness, but it's I keep on saying it's embedded. It really is embedded. So. Uh, the quizzes, they, they like the quizzes that give them automatic kind of feedback, instant kind of feedback. Um, the way that we do our examinations now, both the single best answers and the uh, short answer questions are done electronically and they can both be done on an iPad. Um, so so all these things um, and the, the, the quizzes and the lectures uh, this last year with COVID, I mean, goodness knows what we would have done if we didn't know that all of our students had iPads. I mean, a lot of them have laptops as well, but they use them in, in different ways and for different purposes. And it would have been a struggle because some students only have their iPads that we gave them. They don't have any, anything else. Um, so, yeah, it, it's hard to quantify. But if you took that element out, it would have a, a toppling effect on loads of other things that they insist upon or thank us for so yeah it's it, it's almost very it's very difficult to quantify but it's very important but it's that it's that massive transition and i think you you both articulated it so well from from that nice to have oh we come to leicester and and we get an ipad to essential and it's you know it's now this embedded um piece of of of, of equipment of the toolkit that's going to just add you know value 
not not just to to learning and, and the experience but but also there's there's so many notes um that we've spoken about about the just i think you touched on it earlier mark you know it gives them that device to use personally as well you know it becomes not just their their toolkit for work but their social media their you know during lockdown how i can't even count how many facetime sessions that i had with with family and um, through through my apple devices so no very very important part of of, could, of what you guys are doing could i just mention one thing that i think is um for me personally has been like transformative and that was uh the apple pencil coming out so initially it was only on pro versions um but now, obviously, it's, you know, even the base model, which, you know, has even come down in price since since we first started buying them. And honestly, having that um, and good third party alternatives, actually, there's a couple uh, that, that are really, really good, too. But the Apple Pencil, I think, is one of the, the things that have made has made the iPad like a proper um, get work done device. Um, before it was absolutely fine and, and, you know, you had those kind of squidgy pens with the kind of big things and it was, you could write with them. The bingo dabbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they were a bit large. Um, <laughs> but, you know, students managed actually, uh, you know, I don't know how, but they, they managed. But now there's, yeah, it's, I, for me, that was personally one of the biggest moments when it came to the, to all models um, because all of a sudden, You've got this kind of precision and control with this pencil, um, as well as all the other kind of normal pinch and zoom and, and things you can do. But from an you know from an academic point of view or a getting work done point of view, uh, it's I think it's just huge. I can share with you that um, Mark is an artist, and um, one of the ways that he um, will teach in his gastrointestinal um, uh, unit is um, to use um, a, an app called Explain Everything. And so you go on, you go on there and I, you should probably explain this, but you're, you're drawing and you're, <laughs> and you're recording and. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, especially, well, especially during lockdown, instead of giving a normal kind of recorded lecture with just the PowerPoint slides, I, I tended to just start from scratch and just build up concepts by drawing or, or writing and whatever. And I did it all, all on my iPads. Um, the sound quality was, you know, absolutely incredible. Well, you know, very good, no hiss, <laughs> which, is a, which is a big deal. Sound quality has been huge for, for students over, over lockdown. And um, really reliable, like, um, you know, you wouldn't lose work or, or really frustrating things like that. And and after a while, I mean, there's a bit of a learning curve, but it, it became just so powerful for me as a, as a teacher to be able to kind of put something down in a five or 10 minute little kind of um, video where I just built up a concept and uh, you could refer students back to these recordings instead of, go, you know, because often they're the similar things that they don't understand. It's not generally a surprise when somebody doesn't understand something. So if you just can do little videos for, I did them for all my lectures. So ended up, I don't know, with 50 or so videos um, that, yeah, just, I think made, it really made me happy to make them actually, <laughs> even though it was a lot of work, because I felt like for, for the first time I could actually build up an idea. Uh, and that was harking back to the Apple Pencil, impossible prior to having a, you know device like that and simple app um yeah that that yeah again just <laughs> so so much good stuff just co coming out of the out of the conversation and um, and i could talk to you both all day about this because it's it's um it's, it's a brilliant story and there's there's there's, there's so much um that that you know is clear to see and hear about um that, 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 that this is given to, to your students and to your staff but i'd like if we may, just to, in the interest of time and beginning to wrap up, just just touch on staff because I think Mark, you know, you you spoke about that so nicely there from your first hand sort of experience as an academic, and it's clear to hear you talk. You're passionate about the technology and how it works, but there's there's many more members of the the, the academic delivery team within the within the school. How have they adopted it? How how have um you know how how have your peers used iPad? Um, how's it helped them? 
um, teach. Um, and Therese is actually in a much better position to talk about this because she's the person that, <laughs> even though it's not her job, she's the one who really understands stuff. People will come to her. But all, all I would say is that it's taken time for to get people on board. Um, we're well past that point now. It's absolutely fine. Um, all members of staff get an iPad um, and... Uh, you know, they're they're expected, not expected, but it, at meetings, everyone has their iPad or uh, if they're doing teaching sessions, everyone has their iPad. So um, I think varying pe people use it differently um, for, for different things, depending on their confidence level or what they've found to, to be good. But I would say, again, we were we were really fortunate when we started all of this that um, as part of the getting each student an iPad, we also negotiated getting every member of staff an iPad because we knew that if the students had it and the staff didn't, there'd never be buy-in because there wasn't that connection. Um, but Therese, as I said, Therese is actually in a much better position to answer this because she deals with it day in, day out. Have you seen things, Therese? Okay, well, I can share um, a couple of them. So one of them is... Um, the the Steve Jakes draw with me lectures. So um, so Mark described how he draws on um, uh, you know explain everything for his lecture, but what um, an, our head of anatomy will do. And this is Steve. <clears throat> Um, when we were doing face-to-face -face lectures, I think he, maybe he was doing this electronically as well. He'll say, okay, we're going to study, you know, whatever, um, the pelvis or something. So draw with me. And what he would do in the lecture is he would just kind of switch on um, the uh, visualizer and have some white paper there and a Sharpie. Okay, so he wasn't using his iPad, but because he knew all the students had their iPads, then they could whip out their Apple pencil and draw what he was drawing. And what, and in in that way, he, he knew that by drawing this anatomy, it would get embedded in their minds because you have to know what is connected to the next thing. And then, you know, if something is fractured, then this is how the whole system is uh, is affected, etc. And that's what he was trying to get across in his anatomy teaching. So um, because he knew that, you know, everybody had their iPads and you can't draw on a laptop, you know, so it, th this is something that was quite I thought this was really good teaching technique. Um, now, Lisa Quinn, she's another one. So she would teach um, head and neck anatomy. She was using her iPad um, with these, um, some of these pretty fancier um, uh, 3D uh, anatomy uh, images. And she would hook that up to the input in the lecture. And then she would be showing, you know, flip around the brain and say, okay, well, here's, the, here's where this aspect is. And here's where this aspect is. And you know, if you get a spike in your brain here, that's what's going to happen to you, you know, et cetera. Sorry for being gross. But, you know, so so she would use that. And some of these are, you know, they're just so cool. You can kind of just really see it, you know, and and so she would uh, she would use that as a, as, a, as a cool technique. Yeah, again, so, so great. I mean, we talk about learning styles all the time in, in, in what we do here. And, you know, to give that power to, for students to be able to to visualize it and actually see it. And, and even with drawing, you know, anyone that's a kinesthetic learner like me, where actually drawing it out just helps everything go in. Um, yeah, so powerful, guys. So um, to start wrapping our conversation up today, and I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, um, what do you wish if you had a, a, a magic mouthpiece you could share with the wider education community about your uh, about your journey with ipad well i would say um uh you know instead of byod bring your own device uh, it's just made life so much easier for me as the one who kind of has to support this um because i know you know apple is consistent the software is going to match the hardware and I don't have to worry about it. It's a beautiful thing, you know, <laughs> and, and I know. And, and so if all the students have the same device, then I, I know that if I choose something, I can test it on my iPad. I can write instructions and it's going to work for all the students. The worst that's going to happen is maybe there's an app upgrade and something is a little different. But I I always feel like I can, you know, like I can trust sort of like the Apple system of, um uh, you know, quality in the app store and stuff like that. So, so yeah, um, it, it's just a time saver and an aggravation saver to have a single digital platform like this. That's what I would say. 
Thanks ever so much, Therese. And, and same question to you, Mark. Um, I would say when we were first starting out, actually, we had a lot of help from Manchester um, Medical School, who were, I think, the first or, or certainly what, before us, yeah. they were giving out um, iPads to students in their clinical years. Yeah, so only a portion of their years. So we were yeah. the first to go all years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and they had, a, they had a team who were really amazing. They had like a team of four um, just working on this, and, th and they – pushed updates out to the students and they, they did stuff and and um, they were super helpful and, and super fun crew actually we, we got to have quite a few interesting meetings with them um, we we didn't have that and one of their words of caution which was totally legitimate was uh, you know don't just give the iPads out uh, because it will just be you know it won't be used but we, we we didn't have that option. We, we could we could have the iPads, but we couldn't have the team that went with it. It was me and Therese. Um, and but we went with it anyway. We thought uh, rightly so. I thought we, we if we miss this opportunity, we may not get it again. And then it's very, very hard. So we went with it and we did it very simply. We just gave the iPads out and we recommended some apps and we stopped. Quite importantly, we stopped giving them paper workbooks. And in my waffle, <laughs> my my mouth, <laughs> the one thing I would say is you don't need a big team for this to have a massive effect. And I think there's one thing having the cost of the iPads, but it's another thing thinking you have to support it. It it sort of to a large degree supports itself. Yep. And the students are the, the best people to actually innovate. So we, you know, they're, they're bright, they're young, they, they're used to, especially now, they're totally used to this type of stuff. And you'll, you'll find lots of happy accidents, you'll find lots of innovation happening within the student body, so that you don't need to have uh, boring adults tell, telling them what to do all the time with these devices. They'll find ways to fit them in. If you uh, scaffold their path slightly, and if you insist on certain things, uh, I would say if you've got the opportunity, just go for it because it's only going one way. I mean, ev you know, we're not we're not going to go back to paper. Um, and so just get on board, I think, if you can. I mean, you know, if, if you can afford it. So <laughs> do it. Yep, absolutely. Sound advice, and and from from a team that have obviously delivered great things since since this was conceived as an idea back in 2013. Um, you guys are absolutely the, the 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 experienced ones to share those share those success stories. And um, I think that about concludes our conversation today. Like I said, we could go on all day because um, there's, there's there's so much more that I want to find out about. But um, Thank you ever so much for your time. And um, we've had the um, we've had the chat running on the right hand side, and we've had some questions coming in. So, um, if I may, I'll pass over to to answer a few of those. Um, but just again, on behalf of the the wider team here at Academia and the, the wider education community, because it's it's guys like yourselves that really are adding value to it, and it's you know it's our duty to share these stories. Um, thanks from the bottom of my heart. It was a brilliant conversation. So, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs>